Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about bags that don't hold their value versus investment bags and my bag buying process to go along with that. This is probably my most frequently asked question. It's whether any given bag holds its value and whether I think it's a smart purchase. And I totally understand the fascination around it because I always wanna try and make smart purchases when it comes to my bag buying as well. Even if I know it's not necessarily going to be an investment bag, I want to go into that purchase knowing that and being okay with that. So I understand the fascination which is why I thought I would go ahead and do this video. I'm going to split it into three parts. So the first part is going to talk about what exactly is an investment bag. The second part is going to be discussing how to tell whether a bag will hold its value. And in the third section, I'm going to talk about my bag buying process and how I decide whether to buy retail or go down the pre-loved route. This video is in collaboration with Vessier Collective. As many of you will know, I've shopped with Vessier Collective for a few years now. Most recently, I bought my Givenchy Antigona from them, which I got a great deal on and which I absolutely love to bits. They're essentially an online marketplace where you can buy and sell luxury goods, whether that's clothing, shoes, handbags, accessories. They have a lot of handbags. There's a lot of Chanel. There's a lot of many other brands. And their key differentiator is that they authenticate everything for you. So when you purchase something, it goes straight from the seller to the Vessia Collective headquarters, where they authenticate it in-house and then ship it right out to you. So it really is a worry-free experience. If you're in the market for a pre-loved handbag or any other luxury good, I would definitely recommend and checking them out. I'll leave their details down below. So first up is what is an investment bag? And I feel like I always need to say this, but when I'm talking about investment bags, I don't mean as an alternative to stocks and shares or anything like that. I mean it as an accessory piece which will either retain its value or increase in value as the years goes on, which makes it a very good wardrobe addition. Obviously, we're not recommending buying bags instead of property or stocks and shares or anything like that. This is purely in the realms of wardrobe and fashion and what makes a good investment purchase as we would say. So first up, I'm going to be talking about what exactly is an investment bag. And generally speaking, the rule here is that it has to be a classic model, which is produced year after year. And the production side of things is really important because as long as it's continually produced, demand for it stays high. It stays in fashion, people want it, and therefore the resale value stays high as well. If it rolls out of production though, people soon forget demand for it drops and that really affects the resale value. So by far the single biggest indicator is whether it's still in production and whether it will continue to be in production for many, many years. The three brands that are best at this are Chanel, LV and Hermes. Those are always the three brands which people will think about when talking about investment bags, I think. But it's also really important to note that it's only certain models within those brands. So for Hermes, I'm talking about the Kelly and the Birkin. For Louis Vuitton, it will be the Speedy and the Nerfle. And for Chanel, it's obviously the classic flap. Those three fashion houses also see very large price increases, which is another aspect of whether a bag will hold its value and whether it will become an investment bag, so to speak. So Chanel in particular are known for their absolutely crazy price increases, which prices a lot of people out, but it also makes for a very, very healthy resale market. Other brands also increase their prices, but they're nowhere near the same size and scale as the Chanel price increases. So price increases definitely do have a major impact, but more than anything, it will be whether it is a classic model which is produced year after year. I think production is really important to think about when you're considering brands, particularly like Chanel and Louis Vuitton, which also produce many, many seasonal bags, which are priced pretty much exactly the same as their classic models but don't hold their value in anywhere near the same way that their classic models do so Chanel seasonal bags will often run 2,000 3,000 pounds sometimes even more which will be the same kind of price range as their classic models but they don't hold their value anywhere near as well and that's because they fall out of production people forget about them and they're just not searching for them which makes selling them very difficult so those two brands in particular are notorious for doing that they do some amazing beautiful classic investment bags but they also do a lot of seasonal bags which don't hold their value in anywhere near the same way. That said, I don't think investment bags are a black and white issue and I do think there are shades of grey here. So there are other brands which can create classic bags. They may not quite have the stellar resale value of a Chanel classic flap. But they do produce bags which do very well on the resale market quite consistently. In particular, I'm thinking of the Chloe Drew, which I have right here, which I'm a huge fan of. This, for many, would be considered a trendy bag, but it has been around for many years now and Chloe continually produces them because they do very well. 
That's not to say that that's going to be true in 10 years time, but it has all the makings of a classic bag. And because of that, the resale value tends to be very strong. I actually looked at buying a Chloe Drew on the resale market, but I found that the prices were so close to retail that it didn't make sense for me to do. So the Chloe Drew is a great example of that. Other examples I can think of are the Celine Nano, the Gucci Soho, and also the Saint Laurent clutches, which do vary a little bit from year to year, but generally speaking, they have very classic designs and they seem to do very, very well on the resale market. So to sum up this section very simply, if a bag remains popular over a long period of time and the fashion house continues to produce it year after year, the resale value will likely remain very, very strong. Next up, I'm going to be talking about how to tell whether a bag will hold its value. By no means is this an exact science, but I do have four tips or tricks that will help you decide or guesstimate whether a bag will hold its value and to what degree. My first piece of advice is to research. Whenever I'm looking at buying a new bag, I always do a ton of research about it online. And my first point of call is usually to find a resale website. So find a resale website that has a lot of bags for sale, like Vessia Collective, and compare the resale price or the average resale price with the retail price. This should give you a really good idea of what does and doesn't hold its value. My second piece of advice is to look at the brand and look at the brand's history. So usually when a brand has a history of it bags which go into favor really quickly but also fall out of favor just as fast, the resale value won't be quite as strong. And of course there are exceptions to this. As I mentioned, the Chloe Drew I think is a great example of a supposedly trendy bag which I think is quite classic and the resale value is quite strong strong, but Chloe as a brand does have many examples of previous it bags which really have not held their value well. The Paddington is one example. So have a look at the brand, be aware of anomalies and exceptions, but generally speaking, the brand is always a good place to start. My third piece of advice is to look at the shape and the design of the bag. Usually speaking, not always, but usually the more classic a bag looks, the better it will do on the resale market. So a good example of that is the camera bag. The Gucci Soho always does pretty well on the resale market and that's just because it's a very simple classic shape which people always seem to go back to. On the flip side of that, if a bag has a particular design flaw, so I can think of the Celine belt bag as a design which people either really seem to love or hate, it can sometimes negatively impact the resale value. So have a look at the shape and the design, see how that could possibly affect the resale value either in a positive or a negative way. My fourth and final tip is to look at exposure. Generally speaking, the more popular the bag is, the better it does in terms of resale value. So it's always a good idea to look at fashion magazines, fashion blogs, Instagram, and even purse forums as well. They all give you a good idea of how much buzz there is around the bag, which will have a direct impact on the resale value. And for my last section, I'm going to be discussing my bag buying process and how I decide whether to buy new or go down the pre-loved route. So the first thing I consider is how much I can save, and I do this just as like I mentioned before by researching and taking a look at pre-loved websites. If there is a substantial saving and I'm fairly confident I can get what I want in terms of the exact style and the exact condition I want, and I can be flexible about conditions. Sometimes I won't mind if there's a mark or two, if I think that it isn't super obvious to me or I won't mind it. I take all these things into account, and if I'm fairly confident I can get what I want at a price that I'm happy with, then I'll go down the pre-loved route. The second thing I take into account is how likely it is that I'm going to want to resell the bag at some point. There are some bags which I think of as forever bags I'm never going to want to get rid of, such as my Chanel Jumbo, and there are other bags which I really like, but I'm not totally sure that they'd be in my collection for five or ten years. So if I suspect it's likely that I'm going to want to resell the bag at any given point, then I'm much more likely to go down the pre-love route to minimise any losses. Another thing I consider is the actual brand itself. So for example, Chanel is a brand which I'm much more likely to buy retail because I know by going down the pre-love route I'm really not going to save much because the resale values are so high. Similarly I also know because the resale values are so high and demand is so high if I ever did want to resell it probably wouldn't be an issue and people might even pay a little bit more because I have the full set from the store and by full set I mean receipt and dust bag and all that kind of stuff so I absolutely look at the 
brand and judge it on a case by case basis. And finally, the fourth thing I consider is availability and whether the bag I want is actually still available. Sometimes I will get fixated on a bag which has either been just discontinued or I stumbled across it and I missed it the first time. So if it's no longer available and I don't have any choice, then the answer is pretty simple. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on this topic down below in the comment section and let me know if you prefer to buy pre-loved or new or a mix of the two like me. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.